it's Mary. I hope that you are doing well. Thank you so much for joining me today, where we are going to explore an aspect of geometry that combines mathematics and art, and it's called tessellations. A tessellation of a flat surface is covering that flat surface with one or more geometric shapes that do not overlap and there are no gaps between them. Tessellations have a long history going back to ancient Rome and ancient Islamic art. The artist M.C. Escher made use of tessellations in a lot of his artwork. You'll find tessellations in nature also. The arrangement of the hexagonal cells in a honeycomb is a tessellation. You also probably walk on tessellations every day. The tile on this part of the floor of the library, its arrangement is also a tessellation. So it's geometric shapes, in this case a rectangle, that do not overlap and there are no gaps between them. So you can have regular tessellations or semi-regular tessellations. A regular tessellation is made by repeating a shape that has equal sides and all the interior angles are equal. Think of squares, equilateral triangles, and hexagons. This is a regular tessellation made from squares. And to make this, I just took a ruler and a pencil. I laid the ruler on the paper and drew lines. If I were to take my ruler, draw a line through the squares where the lines intersect, I would then have a tessellation of this piece of paper made from triangles. Today we are going to make tessellations. We are going to cover a plane of paper or this piece of paper. You'll need paper to draw your tessellation on. Tape, scissors, pencil, ruler, and if you want, some color markers, cardstock. So the method we are going to use to make our tessellation is a pretty standard way to do that. You're going to want to cut out your cardstock. You can use index cards if you want instead. I used about a two and a half by three inch piece. I also did some that were three and a half by five inch. I'm going to number each corner of my paper here, starting in the upper left, that will be one, then the upper right is two, the lower left is three, and the lower right is four. So near the center, going across, just draw some shapes. And I went with just regular lines for my shapes. You can do curves if you want. And then near the center, vertically, we're going to also make some lines. And I'm just going to work off of that one and go that way. And then here, I'm going to go like that and like that. So now that we did that, we are going to cut our pieces. You have room to make decisions here. If you wanted to, at this point, go up straight and then cut along there, you could do that. I am just going to cut right here like that.
Once you cut them out, just put them back in order. So one, two, three, and four. The first thing we're going to do is take one and two, move them down, and then we're going to flip the sides that they're on. Then we're going to take four and move it over to the top where three was and move three there. At this point, you want to make sure you've got your pieces all straight. They're all joined up together. Then you're just going to take your tape and tape them in place. So I have a few shapes that I can use to make my tessellations. Now's the point where we need our pencil and our paper again. So we are just going to take our shape and Generally, I start in the middle of the page. You can do your tessellation by starting on an edge. You can start in the middle. You can turn it a little at an angle. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to draw trace around the outside of my shape. So you'll notice that after you draw your shape, you'll be able to pick it up, move the other side over and fit it on those lines and keep drawing your shapes. And you'll be able to fill your whole paper. So I just drew in my last one. My sheet is filled. And that is the tessellation that I made from that shape. I did make a couple other tessellations as well. I made this tessellation from this shape, and from the same shape, I made that tessellation. So you can also color in your tessellations after they're finished. So that's a different tessellation I made, and I colored it in with pink and green. So with the tessellation that I made, from this shape on the angle, I took my ruler and drew a line separating the tessellation into two. And from that, I colored one part blue and one part green. And so that tessellation looks like that. And because of the way that I split the, the shape and colored it two different colors, it's kind of hard to see how it fits in. But right there it is. That's the tessellation I colored in from that shape. The thing I like about coloring in the tessellations is that you can see different aspects of the shapes instead of just looking at it in black and white. So if we compare that one with that one, you can see different things about it. And if we compare the green and pink color tessellation to the black and white tessellation there, you notice different things about the shapes as well. 
So I hope that you enjoyed this look at tessellations. You might be wondering, well, where would we use tessellations in real life? Graphic designers might create tessellations to use them as backgrounds on web pages. Artists also make tessellations to use in their art. So now that we've looked at tessellations and we've created one, hopefully you will take some time, create some of your own and explore tessellations a little more. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I'm glad that you were here with me. And until I see you again, I hope that you have fun and that you continue to explore your world. Thank you.